Let's say you are building a house and need to design the floor plan. You know that everyone needs a kitchen and a bathroom. Sure, also a bedroom and a living room. But now you're thinking, maybe you should add a second bedroom when more people are moving in. And perhaps a second bathroom also makes sense because there may be situations where the other one is occupied. While we're at it, maybe we should add a big empty room here that can be divided even further in the future, just to be safe. The house gets built, but afterwards you notice that the second bathroom is actually not really necessary. But now that it is there, it must be cleaned and causes maintenance costs. Next, you are right in reserving some space, because another room is needed. But the reserved space was planned way too generously. This means that the built cost of the house have been way higher than necessary. Hi and welcome to Premature Abstraction. Today we will discuss the topic of my channel name, what premature abstraction in software engineering is. On a first look, the example from the beginning has nothing to do with building software. However, I want to emphasize that many concepts in coding are also applicable in completely unrelated fields. And the same goes for premature abstraction. Software engineers try to predict future needs and build a flexible system too early, adding complexity before it's necessary. This often makes the code harder to maintain and adapt when real requirements emerge. Let's say you have a simple requirement. Build a function that sends out an email notification. Well, that's easy, you write the function and that's it. But now you're thinking, what if this function gets used a lot? Email sending may not be very quick. Maybe we should add a queue with a producer-consumer pattern. Or even make this architecture more event-driven by factoring this out as a rabbit MQQ. Also, maybe we will need different email providers in the future, or send push notifications instead. So we should build a common abstraction for those different providers. The requirement was just to send an email. Now we have a queue, an event-driven system, a provider factory, a microservice and a generic notification system. And we still haven't sent a single email yet. Here we see very well what the issues with premature abstraction are. First, it's a classic case of over-engineering. So introducing unnecessary complexity without clear benefits in places where concrete code would have already sufficed. Next, you introduce abstractions and hierarchies where there are actually none in the real domain that you are modeling. This can make refactors a lot more challenging when the requirements change. There is a very well-known concept which is commonly taught to computer science students called DRY, which stands for don't repeat yourself. The idea is that code blocks that are identical can be factored out into a function to avoid code repetition and make the code more concise. Also, it is quicker to change the code only in a single place and you don't run into the risk of forgetting to change it in some duplicate section. However, this is one of the most frequent sources for premature abstraction because you are adding a layer of abstraction not because the domain requires it, but just to keep the code more compact. And compact often means more complex. Ideally, you want to only add as much complexity as is required by the domain you're modeling and only factor out things that are actually inherently equivalent, not only coincidentally. There is a famous quote from Sandy Metz phrasing it like this, code duplication is far cheaper in terms of technical debt than a wrong abstraction. But now that I'm using this, they seem a lot alike to me. Now, there's differences sort of in the driving data here, but the algorithm, you can see the shape of the algorithm here. The algorithm is really the same. And it is very tempting. We, we have been, we've had the dry rule browbeat into us so strongly. It's very tempting at this point. I'm on a road. I'm on a refactoring road. It's very tempting now to go on a tangent and try to clean this up because we believe the greatest, we've been taught like the greatest virtue is dry. And I would tell you that's the wrong idea here. I'm about to get a lot more information about what this algorithm looks like, I, and I, want, I need to finish the refactoring I'm on before I go on any tangents. So I'm going to notice that similarity but, uh, and keep the duplication and just keep on going down this path and see where it leads. And this brings me to my first big point of this talk. It is far cheaper to keep duplication than it is to have to mess with the wrong abstraction. The first rule we teach novices is don't repeat yourself, dry. And, but have you ever thought about why we teach in that rule? It's because they can't understand anything else. <laughs> they don't know anything, but by God, they can recognize the duplication. And it's a good rule. I'm not saying it's a bad rule, but I'm saying that it's now you're grown up. You know more. And with a, with a 
you have enough experience now to tolerate a little duplication and wait on a better abstraction. It's really hard to deal with the wrong abstraction. At the same time, introducing abstractions too early will lead to unnecessary code, which adds complexity and cognitive load. This also negatively impacts readability. Last, it also hinders agile development. Software should evolve based on real needs, not on assumptions of what will be needed in the future. So the key takeaway is solve the problem you have, not the problem you think you will have. A very much related subject is premature optimization, which probably is a better known term. Here, code performance is optimized too early where the developer does not even know yet which parts of the code will be the ones with the biggest performance impact. This then leads to the same issues as with premature abstraction, where the code is made unnecessarily complicated early on, which wastes development time. All right, but if it's so obvious, why do developers even fall into this trap? I would say that no matter your experience level, everyone is susceptible to this. A junior programmer, for example, may have learned about design patterns and thinks they should always be applied. Things like always using an interface because the underlying implementation may change at some point. Although it is a good idea to really think about how parts of your code interface, it is definitely not necessary to do this everywhere. I actually encountered this issue in production code already. The developer learned at college that they always need to first define an interface to describe the object's interaction contract then to always use an abstract class that cannot be instantiated for code that is shared between the subclasses, and only then implement the actual behavior in a subclass. Most of the time, those two definitions are then just left as unused boilerplate. Developers sometimes abstract too early simply because it makes them feel smart in the moment. It's very easy to get lost in some complicated over-engineering of a simple problem. I once saw a unit test where the author wanted to create three test users. Instead of just having some minor code duplication, he thought about some intricate logic, how the users could still be sorted by name if there will be more than 10 and the numbers get into the double digits. Of course, there is no way that the number of users in this test case would ever have changed, so it was just a big waste of time and way harder to review. But I would say the biggest reason for premature abstraction is trying to be future-proof, and even experienced engineers fall into this trap. It's just too tempting to think about ways how you could generalize this code that could then cover a lot of different use cases. For example, supporting different databases where you realistically will never migrate anyways. Also, alarm bells should ring when someone introduces the strategy pattern where it is not explicitly required to support multiple strategies. So how do we avoid premature abstraction? A widespread principle is YAGNI. You ain't going to need it, and it applies here as well. You should let patterns emerge naturally as your project grows. You should refactor when needed, and not before. And last, you should focus on clarity over cleverness. This has been Premature Abstraction. Thank you for watching.